let's see if we can get a look. Great, we look like we've got 45 folks on. So uh, thanks everybody for joining um, the Lightworks uh, webinar. We're gonna cover today the uh, Tori uh, temperature taking, temperature sensing tablets from Aurora Multimedia. We have Mike Twardak, who's the Chief Operating Officer from Aurora, who's gonna spend 15, 20 minutes share, showing us the product. Uh, we will have a Q&A at the end. Uh, in the meantime, if you have questions uh, as they come up during the presentation, on the toolbar at the bottom, there are a couple of little things you might try. Uh, there's a Q&A button, um, which would be, uh, we'll keep an eye on, and I will try to voice those uh, to Mike and at the appropriate time ask him those questions on your behalf. Uh, there's also a chat uh, uh, button that allows us to chat among ourselves, maybe not uh, disturb Mike on that. And I believe there's a raise hand uh, capability, which we should be able to see if someone's kind of waiting patiently to uh, ask a question. And uh, perhaps we'll uh, you know, either uh, promote you to be on the screen or I'll ask on your behalf if you put it in the, uh, in the Q&A, as I said. So thanks again for joining. And uh, Mike Twardak from Aurora Multimedia. Hey, how you guys doing? First of all, thank you very much for taking some time uh, to look at our product offerings. Uh, there's no doubt we're navigating through some very interesting waters of late. And um, I think the one thing we all have in common is we're kind of anxious to get back to the new normal, however that's going to be defined. We know a component of that, uh, you know, for those corporate offices, the restaurants, the gymnasiums, is uh, the idea is to have a welcoming message to, to our clients. We need them to understand that we're taking steps uh, in this, COVID crisis to try to mitigate uh, potential issues, uh, specifically by doing a very basic triage of temperature uh, for personnel coming through. And that's a whole basic idea behind the Tory product line. Um, the, the device we're looking at here is the 21-inch uh, version of it. It's comprised of a uh, touchscreen LCD. On top is our RF uh, sensor. And up on, on the left and right, we're displaying some active data, uh, the live temperature that we're reading, as well as the infrared imaging showing my profile. Uh, in its basic format, uh, out of the box, it's ready to operate. Uh, we, we mount the display on a pole, table mount, or wall mount. Uh, we provide 12 volt powers through a power brick, and it boots up. We hit a disclaimer, and this is what you're gonna experience. So right away, it's, it's active. Uh, doing its job measuring temperature. There are some initial settings you may consider to look at to make some adjustments specifically re related to temperature. So I'm going to show you that real quick. And so up on this screen, we're going to see we have uh, options for Celsius or Fahrenheit. Uh, we're currently set to 95 to 100.4 degrees, uh, 100.4 being where we're going to trigger a high temp alert. Uh, there's an audible component to that. We have the option to uh, ramp that up or uh, ramp it down all the way to a mute state. And we can adjust other system settings like passwords, uh, application updates over IP, uh, language, and other system settings. I'm going to make an adjustment to the, the high temp. I'm going to drop that to 96. And so I can demonstrate an over temp condition for you here. Okay. So the ambience reading in the low 80s, as I step into the field, we're gonna see a visual and an audible indication. So you're seeing the, the temperature right there. And I'll step back out of field. So in, per the spec, uh, the recommend, recommended uh, distance for reading that temp is uh, 0.5 to one meter, roughly about three feet for the most accurate reading. Uh, the we are accurate to within 0.3 degrees Celsius, 0.5 Fahrenheit, and uh, that's that's how that works. Uh, the other thing I'm going to demonstrate is how reactive the sensor is. So I'm going to walk through the field very quickly. And so without taking a pause or anything, you can see right away it's triggering on an over temp, even if I'm not facing it. And I can also demonstrate, even if we go a little further back, it is still picking up my, my temperature. At this point, I'm about eight feet away. Uh, so you can see how sensitive the, the device is and how reactive it is. I'm gonna reset this back to the regular temp so we don't keep hearing that buzz. Mm -hmm. 
100. Okay, so that's the basic functionality of the product. We're also offering it in different sizes. We have a 15 inch display. Uh, they all operate exactly the same, same software, same sensor. It's just a different size monitor. We have 15 inch and a 10 inch we're looking at right there. Uh, beyond that, we're also coming out with a seven inch version that will be weatherproof. Uh, that'll be shipping shortly, uh, I believe within six to eight weeks. And uh, the, other, the other thing about the product is we are integrating a lot of uh, more advanced features. Uh, we understand what's happening with the market. There's gonna be a lot of players uh, in this industry. And so our take on it is to take our AV background and integration background and add, uh, add our control engine, which is Reax. Reax is a Linux-based Node.js web server. And this allows us to do inter-system integration, send emails, SMS, SMS alerts. Uh, it's also gonna be part of the digital signage component. So with the system, we can communicate to possibly a security system, maybe as your users are logging in or, or, or swiping in in a corporate environment, uh, that information can be captured uh, and associated to that, that card number uh, at the time of the high temp. Uh, a lot of this is really up to how you want to use the system. Uh, so we're trying to bake in as many features as possible. Uh, as to the digital signage component, we're going to allow you to do messaging on the product. Uh, it may be something uh, regarding some corporate event, or it could be some type of uh, advertising revenue you might want to put up there if it's a gymnasium it might be some GNC vitamin ads something to that effect so we're trying to to really add value to the product to make sure you get the most return on the investment but the the, the the most important function of this is to do those temperature measurements and also convey to your clients that you are taking action uh, you're providing an environment that is as safe as possible without being too invasive and that's the story behind the Tory product line Thank you, Mike. Um, I see a question in the Q&A, so I'll share that sure. now. Uh, what is the current demand, and is your team prepared for an overwhelming amount of requests? The, we, we launched this about two weeks ago, I think two, two weeks ago yesterday, and the demand has been nothing less than incredible. Uh, email boxes, meetings like this are just constant. Uh, there's obviously a high interest in the solution. Uh, the feedback, again, as I described, coming from these clients is we need to open the doors. Uh, the best way to do that is we need these people to have a comfort level that they're, they're coming to a facility that is taking as many steps as possible within reason to, to keep us safe. And uh, I, I think one of the analogies I like to use is the metal detector at an airport. We know how that works. Uh, you, you walk through it, uh, a light goes off, and we go through that standard process of the secondary check which is empty your pockets, take your shoes off, all the fun stuff. Uh, in this case, you know, the Tory is going to, going to read a temperature very accurately, uh, but it's not a diagnosis of medical condition. Uh, those protocols are what the client decides or determines that might be getting a secondary uh, oral temperature reading, but something that backs up the data that we're presenting that there is a concern about the, the person's health. Thank you. I think there's another question. Uh, do these require an internet connection for basic functionality? They do not. As the box, they are operational as, as you're looking at this. So they're right on these products, there is no internet connection. Uh, the only thing here is the 12 volt power. In this case, going, it's actually fished up through the, the, the pipe of the stand. And we're, we're demonstrating another feature, which I'll, I'll speak to right now. Uh, all these products have an HDMI output. Some of the requests uh, from our, our clients are that you know that they may want to be a little bit more remote in managing this system. So just using an HDMI cable to an aux monitor like we're doing here, uh, we have a, a mirrored image of it, and now the audio component is coming out of a secondary uh, product versus a Tory product. All right, well, we're getting some good follow-on questions here. So um, I'll just take them in order that I'm reading them, and if uh, they may be a little redundant, um, perhaps. Uh, question is, does this have facial recognition capability and the capability to store historical individual temperature checks, but the ability to limit that access for data slash privacy protection? Great question. Yeah, so the, 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 the first phase of this was to get this basic functioning product to market, uh, and that's where we're at right now. We're just about ready to start shipping larger quantities. 
uh, to speak to the other question, yeah, we are ramping up as a matter of fact. We received first articles a couple weeks ago and we're now getting the pr production quantities. Um, as far as data, right, so we are integrating many features to this. A uh, part of that is uh, facial detection, uh, which speaks to how, how the system reads uh, the target uh, to, to kind of mask maybe the coffee mug in this case. Uh, facial recognition, as far as identification, is also on the roadmap. And those are coming over, over you know, a period of time, probably you know, six to eight weeks is when I'm being told. As far as data management, we, we can gather data, we can forward the data. It's really up to you how, do you, how you wanna manage that. It could be a simple email, or we could be pushing data to a security system. Uh, that really depends on what you're doing. To follow up on that, there are a couple questions related to integration, perhaps with a security system. Um, aside from alert emails and text, can this be integrated into an access control system or alarm system to restrict entry? And I'll, I'll just add on, maybe if you could describe the architecture, how this product is designed you know, to be able to be added on uh, like in that fashion and perhaps others. Right, so the React control engine is an automation system in the world of AV control. That's what it's all about, integrating to other systems. These systems use different protocols. There's an API from that, whether it's a projector or a sound system. In this case, it could be a security system. And so we take that uh, information and we work with a team and, and decide what information do you want us to forward? When do you want it forwarded? A good example, I had a call today, uh, the, the corporate building has it's a large facility, they have turnstiles. And what they're looking for is as, as they swipe, if there's a, condi a condition of over temp because the product would be right at the turnstile, at that time there would be a snapshot of the person. We would, we would record, uh, tie that to the data of the card swipe and forward that to uh, the management office. So in that way they, they're not standing right there, they know the person is in the building, they know a uh, temperature anomaly was detected, so then they would proceed to where this person is headed off to their office or whatever area that they work, and they would do their, their follow-up protocols to uh, determine if there's something, an actual uh, illness issue to be uh, managed. Great, so uh, next question is, do email or text alerts, alerts work out of the box or do they require additional hardware? It, that is all firmware. So uh, today, if you receive the product, you would have the functionality uh, functionality we're showing here uh, through a, a future firmware update. Once we have the React engine, which should be available in the coming weeks, literally two, three, four weeks tops, I think. Uh, this is something we've done very similar to our control platform, uh, integrating this into uh, the other the, uh, the touch file products that we use. Uh, so once that's in, uh, available, you would go through the setup pages that we were just at, do it, do an update to, to the system, and then you could set up those email parameters as far as selecting, you know, where, the, where those messages are being directed to. Great. Um, another question about, you know, data um, and collecting information. Um, certainly there's probably concerns about privacy, et cetera, but uh, the question here is where is the data hosted if uh, you are, if we are collecting that data? Data stored? Is that yes, the stored, I, I guess so, yeah. I mean, I, we, we could uh, store data locally. Uh, there's certainly capacity to do that, but I would imagine in most applications, it would probably be better to, to forward that directly to a storage server or system or security or, or whatever platform they want us to, and that would be managed uh, at that point. I have a follow-on question to perhaps an earlier one, so maybe this has been answered, but uh, it says, we are looking to use at a medical, uh, to, at a medical device facility for our employees. Is there a way to notify others, like HR management, of someone who has results at or above 100.4 degrees? Is the system currently set to keep historical data and running reports? Again, similar questions, not maybe. Similar question data. again. Data could be managed internally. Uh, I, I think it would be best handled on you know a facility server, but we could certainly do both. I guess as a backup, um, that that wouldn't be an issue. All right, I have uh, one more question that I'm seeing, but uh, of course we have plenty of time if folks wanna ask any things or for clarification. Um, question is, can these do double duty as a scheduling display with Outlook or other integration? Uh, we have s had some questions about integration tightly with certain systems. Again, if this system has an API that allows us to pull data uh, from, from a clock-in system, 
uh, and then push data back. So we, we could prompt a user to enter a code or we could add an RFID swipe uh, to the Tory product and kind of be an extension of that security system. All these things are certainly possible. It's, it's just a matter of uh, you know, development time and priorities as to uh, what, what and when we're, we're putting it into the product. Great, we've got a couple more questions that have come in. Uh, how well does the device handle multiple targets, people, being in the frame at the same time? Yeah, cur currently the way it's reading, if there are two personnel in the target area and one happens to have the over temp, you're gonna get an over temp of that zone uh, because there are two people in it, you would have to ask them to separate possibly or pull them both aside and do a secondary measurement, but uh, it, it will not distinguish as to which one you could, I mean, once you learn to read the infrared display, I mean, there the, the tones kind of kind of dictate uh, what the hotspot is. Uh, but ideally, these people would be going through this zone one at a time. You are going to have uh, it is possible that people will kind of be closer together than they should. So if you get an alert, then you would have to mitigate that by separate separating them and have them have them walk through uh, indivi individually, uh, one at a time. Mm -hmm. Another question about storage. Is there an SD card or some other means of data storage on board the device? Uh, there are US, uh, USB ports. We could certainly allow you to plug in a two terabyte USB stick and store data that way. I don't know if that's ideal. Somebody could go up and grab it and walk away with it. But again, I, I think remote storage uh, would probably be ideal, but it's certainly possible. All right, another question. Any additional features or functionality which would be valuable in a non-pandemic situation? Yeah, so, so uh, the digital signage component is a popular one. Again, having this device that you know, we've installed around the facility can now function uh, on an informational basis. Um, you know, uh, some of the other features uh, as to reading uh, temperature, you know, we can gather data as to how many people have been uh, check for temperature, how many passed and failed, you know, reports like that. Um, we're looking at two-way intercoms. Uh, we're looking to stream video from the system if you choose. What, you, what you're looking at right now is an actual application that's running on this product. This is all going to be revamped to be uh, solely web-based. So that whole experience, once it's uh, being hosted from the web server, can be accessible uh, remotely as a web page. Uh, we'll also have a central management system. So if you have you know, 20 or, or 50 of those youths on your campus, you can then monitor all those systems from a central location and uh, quickly identify where there might be an issue and take the appropriate action. Great, uh, next question is, uh, can you go over the inputs and outputs on the device, if any? Yeah, sure, so uh, I'll, I'll turn this around so you have, have an idea what we're looking at on this particular version. So again, the only requirement is, again, power coming up the pole. The power is being uh, inserted right here. The only other connection is USB connection from the sensor uh, to, to the Tori panel. And of course, we have the HDMI connection here uh, that's going to the AUX panel. Uh, beyond that, there are several USB ports, and, and that's really the extent of the actual physical IOs on it. Now that we're looking at the kind of the, the, phys the physical enclosure and such, would you mind kind of just showing the different mounting um, options that you have? Um, yeah, yeah. There? currently, so you can see the pole stand, of course. Uh, we have another shorter version that's uh, designed for table mount, but this is adjusted uh, vertically, so we can adjust that up and down, and that'll hold any, any of the products. We have two smaller versions. So this is where we're hosting the, the 10 inch. So this one has a slight vertical adjustment. We could ramp this up a little bit, uh, but there's also a, a fixed height one that allows just tilt only uh, for the 10 inch version. Are you catching that? Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. And can that be wall mounted? Is there a-, a Yeah, there, there, I, somewhere in here, there, there is specific wall mount hardware uh, that is also available. Uh, for purchase. <clears throat> Question is uh, come in about availability, lead times. Um, I, if, I, if I understand correctly, this is not yet shipping. 
Um, but uh, what's the information on all of that? Sort yeah, of we literally started shipping. We, we've got you know uh, lower production quantities in house already. Uh, the higher quantities in the hundreds are, are starting to come in. I think starting next week. Beyond that, it, we have a larger ramp ramp ups. Uh, the initial target run we're looking at is about a quantity of 5,000. But we're based on everything we're seeing. We're gearing up for uh, larger runs than that. Uh, some of the opportunities we're having discussions with, as you could imagine, is you know restaurant chains, uh, uh, you know fitness chains, uh, virtually everything from Border Patrol to uh, golf club, uh, golf club places, and uh, I mean anywhere people people congregate. Uh, this is a hot topic, no doubt about it. Pardon the pun. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, this question is, uh, you know, about the environment in which these would be placed. Um, specifically says, how does it handle the ambient temperature if it's outside or mounted in the sun? Uh, this person is thinking about stadium settings. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah no, that's a great question. Uh, temperature itself doesn't have a, a direct impact to the ability for the sensor to read the target. Right. So uh, some analogies, uh, I was talk, talking to somebody from an airport and if somebody's exposed to very, very cold air, it's it's more likely that's going to affect the target area. So if you've been out in the cold, it's you know 17 degrees outside, and you walk in the front door, and you step in front of this product, there's a good chance that your skin temperature is going to be a little cool, of course. Uh, but as to the system operating and reading that temperature, uh, it, it doesn't have a big effect on it. So in the spec sheet, we we call for 32 to 100 degrees ambient is acceptable. Kind of in that direction, there's another comment in the chat. Um, um, is there a way to keep what shows on the monitor confidential so other employees don't see the temp reading or the infrared diagram? Exactly, great great question. A, a lot of that, uh, we've spoken to many people and it's everything from they like what they see here and that's fine. They, they want to strip the actual data. Uh, they don't want any monitor. You know, maybe they want to mount a sensor uh, remotely from the Tory product. Uh, so we're looking at all those options. That digital signage component, which is really part of uh, making this a uh, full web page experience, will allow us to develop a web page for the, the person going through the process, which may be just video or maybe nothing but digital signage. But on the remote station, you can have exactly what you're looking at here. Um, and on, on a larger monitor, you, you could put multiple Tory videos and data a kind of map to a single screen. So that's going to give us the, the full flexibility to provide the information where you want it. Some specific questions here. Is there any problem with people coming in from hot weather and getting their temperature read? I know you mentioned that earlier about people being cool, but uh, somebody I know had asked about a sunburn. Uh, yeah. Any issues there? Yeah, that's a great question. I, you know, I would assume a sunburn would impact that, but based on some of the, we're doing a lot of reading about a lot of things right now. And uh, I guess a sunburn can impact it, but not that greatly. But I think that, uh, you know, assuming you just got off the beach and you've been cooking for five hours and you get, you get a severe sunburn, I think we, some of us have been there. I know I have, and uh, I know it's more than half a degree. Uh, so, so the thing to remember is, you know, what this and other products are, are offering is a, a means to read the target temperature and do it accurately. And that's what we're doing as to why, it is reading that way. That's where the secondary protocols come in. It's a discussion. Hey, you look like you, you've been on the beach for five hours. And yes, I have. <laughs> you know, so, but maybe a, a, an oral temperature might help mitigate that and, and say, well, you know what? Your, your core temperature is reading very close to normal. So it looks like it's just a, a sunburn condition. Uh, similarly, a question someone's asked, what if someone's holding a hot drink? Yeah, so, so again, anything in the target area of the infrared profile, uh, would that is a high temperature will trigger that uh, one of the things I mentioned earlier is a uh, facial detection uh, again, which is a, a filter mechanism to you know look at at the information that's being presented, identify you know what would be a normal uh, profile for somebody's face, and then any object outside would kind of be masked off from the reading, so that should mitigate that ideally, yeah they wouldn't be walking through a, with a, a coffee cup but we are going to try to filter that out in case that does happen. And then the last question that I have opened, and there may be more coming and we'll do a last call, but uh, does, does the device need to be pointed at a blank wall 
or can others be in the background? Uh, does the color or material of the wall make any sort of difference on the readings? No, no impact on color. Uh, when you said others in the background, as far as personnel, uh, that you know, that's something you, you want to manage. You know, as you can see, you know, I'm getting, I'm registering from farther away. So if I was behind somebody that's actually only one meter from the device, I would be contributing to the overall temperature read. All right. Okay, and then the last kind of a specific question, are they visa mounting pattern to be able to mount it uh, with wall mounts? There are, the, the 15 and 21 have a 100 millimeter pattern, uh, the 10 inch is a 75 millimeter pattern. Oh, and I, uh, this question I don't think came up. Um, I'm, uh, could you share the list pricing kind of on the different models you've got just so people get an order of magnitude? of Yeah, time? yeah, absolutely. It starts with a 10 inch, 15 and 21. At the 10 inch, uh, MSRP is 3,400. And then it's 3,800 and 4,200 um, on these products. Okay, a uh, question has come in. Is there a way to shrink the area the device reads, I guess that's a targeting kind of. Uh, oh, um, for the infrared mm -hmm. information? Yeah, uh, I think so. That, that's a good question. If you mean the actual function of the sensor, I, I don't know if we would adjust that, but that's an engineering question. I could talk to them about it, but I, I guess what would be the reasoning behind that? Or you just want a, a closer focal point possibly for the, the head regions. So I guess if that's your point, I would think that could be possible. We could kind of mask off more of the area than that's necessary. Cause we see at, at one meter, I'm probably, you know, taking up about a third of the, the area horizontally. So we could probably reduce that a bit. Um, interesting point. I think people are contributing to your product development now. They're suggesting perhaps well, it, a zoom, it, it, a zoom it, uh, lens <laughs> to tighten it has, has been suggested. No, well, I'll tell you that, that's kind of story behind us. We are, we are we listen very well, and that, that's kind of story behind our company. A lot of our product ideas are, are certainly uh, influenced by the feedback we get, and this last two weeks has really been a great experience. Uh, we, we've done I don't know how many of these zoom calls, some very intimate discussions with every vertical you could imagine. And uh, and it's all making a lot of sense. We're, we're getting a better vision how to position our product. Again, we don't want to just be a temper, temperature sensor. We want to be one of the best on the market, but we want to give you that value add beyond, beyond that. So your ROI is where it needs to be with the digital signage component, data management, uh, integration to other systems. Uh, that's what we do, and that's what we're going to apply to this product. Okay, so let me see. I think a couple more came in. Uh, this may have been asked, can the sensor simply do the reading but convey the result to another monitor that other personnel are monitoring further away, like 20 or 30 feet away for privacy purposes? That is correct. Yeah, you do, the monitor, the infrared component does not have to be attached to the Tori device mechanically, but through the USB. Currently, the, the software that manages all that data is is the display. A question I got on a previous call today, as a matter of fact, uh, was they wanted to integrate the Tori system onto their specific monitor. So the thought process there is that processing that's currently built into the Tori display could be put into a small black box. So the, the sensor could mount to that USB small black box and then over network that could communicate uh, to the remote display and remote server to give you that same experience. But so as that, of this that, time, you don't sell that sensor separately? Uh, no, no, this yeah. is exactly, what you're looking at right now is what is shipping, and all this is falling into the roadmap, and that all has to be prioritized. Uh, a lot of these ideas are really good ones and, and, and will make sense for a lot of our clients, and that's probably how we're gonna approach that, You know, which one uh, works best for most of our clients as far as priorities. Uh, so, some are pretty easy to figure out, you know, the, the data management, showing stuff, not showing it, uh, that's going to come very quickly because that is one of the more important things uh, that everybody wants uh, to do. They're going to choose how to present this or ha how to integrate this into their facility. It's all based on manage that, managing that comfort level to the client, uh, letting them know we are doing something, but nobody wants to walk to the facility and have bells and whistles and laser guns go off because they have a slight temperature. So it's gonna be something that's managed discreetly as possible and uh, in a way that allows them to, to pull that person aside and have a discussion and, and follow those uh, predetermined protocols uh, that they're gonna use. 
Okay, so I am looking at our various, oh, and other questions come in. Maybe we'll take one more after this. Uh, or do you have any pricing MSRP on the mounts, the floor stand? Um, that, that you uh, Rich, I don't know if Rich, Rich, you still on the call with us? I don't have that off the top of my head. So uh, Rick, if you're speaking, you are muted at the moment. Hey, Rich, you there? Must have fell asleep. I, I apologize. Would they be? I mean, are they on the order of a couple hundred dollars? It's not like we're talking a thousand dollars for a mount or something. Yeah, like I that. think I, I think the one. Uh, I don't know. I I think the pole. I don't know. I, I don't want to. I'll get you that information and maybe you could pass it on to to sure. your people that are on the call. Sounds good. Um, that's not a problem. But I mean, they're, they're mounts. These are, you know, these and are, metal. are standard type mounts. So. Okay. All right, so um, we have uh, gone through the questions that we've seen thus far. Um, oh, I think this question was asked once before and I may have failed to share it. When will the web base be available is the exact question. Yeah, that's one of the things we have on the front burner that, that's really gonna impact the experience of this product. And again, a lot of things we're talking about are encapsulated in, in that technology. So whether it's inter-system integration, managing the experience on the video, sending it uh, as a web page elsewhere. Uh, so that's the top priority that, that's happening right now as we speak. And uh, so that's going to be one of the first things you're going to see in uh, a firmware update. Another question. Um, have, you, uh, have you discussed the possibility of this being weatherproofed? I feel like you mentioned it, but maybe more. Yeah, right the, these, these three models that we're showing here are not currently, uh, that, that may come down the road. Uh, the, the first product targeted for that is the seven inch version. And again, that's gonna be something that's gonna be a little bit more portable. Uh, some of the other applications that were asked about is, uh, you know, you've seen systems that are outside conference rooms that are displaying a meeting data, you know, scheduled data for, for meetings and conference rooms. And we, we could, we could send that information uh, for, from that, whatever systems managing that present it there, but also provide that same function as they're walking into the conference room. They happen to be passing through a temperature check and uh, that's where that would work. All right. I would take one more question. If there is uh, someone bashful holding out, we are uh, 34 minutes in. Um, okay, so uh, let me share back. Oops, I think I just pressed a button on my screen. I wasn't here to press. So um, I do wanna share that uh, we are uh, using the Zoom webinar uh, solution. And uh, it's, it's one that I'm seeing a lot of people uh, use. And um, it's something that we, just for shameless plug here, we at Lightworks can help you uh, understand, uh, demo, perhaps even acquire. Um, and of course, uh, the Tori product is uh, something we're extremely interested in. We're getting a lot of interest uh, from customers. <clears throat> I will say the business uh, that we're in is all a buzz about it. Uh, I was on a call this morning with 50 other people that do what we do, and this was the topic of conversation, I'd say of 90% of the, of the call. So it's pretty exciting, and and as you're hearing, you know it's all going to be in the protocols, in the software. Um, there's going to be a lot of <clears throat> best practices that we'll develop over time, I imagine, and and we'll be, of course, uh, keeping our ear to the ground on that, and we'll be sharing that with our customer base, and if appropriate, on a future webinar. Um, I want to thank Mike Tordak for uh, taking time out of his busy schedule. He's the again the chief operating officer of Aurora Multimedia. <clears throat> if you'd pleasure. like more. Yeah, thanks, Mike. It was a good job, by the way. I thought it was excellent. Oh, thank um, if, you. If you'd like more information, you can, of course, visit our website. And then just for those of you who might have missed something or want to share this content with somebody else who was unable to attend, uh, we will be posting the video of this website on our website and on our Lightworks TV YouTube channel within the next couple days. And we look forward to continuing the conversation about this or anything else uh, that we can help you with. Yeah, one Thanks. last quick note, uh, Dave, sure. just to throw that in, I forgot to mention, we are actually filing for FDA approval on this product line, and so we'll see where that goes, but that looks like a very good possibility for us. Oh, very good. All right, thanks, everybody. Really appreciate you joining our webinar, and uh, look forward to communicating further. Have thanks a great a day. Take care, Dave. Thanks. Thank you.